Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you why buying short term out of the money put options is a horrible way to try to make money on a consistent basis in the options market. It's got a horrible track record of being profitable. And I'm going to show you a few reasons why that is. And by the end of the video, I'm also going to show you why, or I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can help that profitability in the long run. So if you've been buying put options in the past and having no luck whatsoever and losing your money buying these things, then you're going to want to stick around and watch this video. So let's go. Okay, everyone, I'm Lee Lowell, founder of SmartOptionsSeller.com, a website to help you try to up your options trading game. So as I said, we're going to be talking about why buying out of the money put options is, has such a horrible track record. And, and it's by the end of this video, you're going to understand why that is. But let's let's take a step back here and, uh, you know, talk about what buying put options is all about and what out of the money specifically means. So if you're bearish on a stock, one way that you can capitalize on that is by buying put options. And a put option is a contract that will increase in value if the stock falls in value. OK, so as stocks fall, put option values go up. So. One way that you can capitalize is to buy a put option and hope that the stock falls far enough, fast enough to a point where you can actually sell that put option contract for a higher price than what you've purchased, purchased it for. OK, so I put up these cheat sheets here to show us, you know, you know what we're going to talk about and, and some of the reasons why. So buying out of the money put options, what does out of the money mean? Well, if the stock's at 100 and you buy a $70 put option, that means the stock has to fall from 100 to 70 in the time allotted if you hold that option all the way to expiration. So the 70 strike is what's called out of the money. It means the stock has to move really far in order for the value of that put option contract to go up where you can sell it for a profit. And at the money put option would be a strike price. If the stock's at 100, the strike price of that option would be close to 100 as well. That's called at the money. But we're talking about out of the money put options with very short term expiration dates. So if stock's at 100, you're looking to buy the 70 put because you think the stock is going to fall from 100 to 70 in a very short period of time. Well, you know, a lot of people think that they know where the stock's going to go in a very short period of time. And the reason why most people fail is because the stock doesn't make that move in the time allotted. And another reason why people will buy the out of the money put options is because they're very cheap on a dollar basis. It's like buying a lottery ticket. You know, you're really speculating here. You're really taking a shot in the dark saying, you know what, I think the stock's gonna fall really far in a short period of time. And in most cases, the stock doesn't fall that far and the option expires worthless, meaning the option buyer loses their whole investment. And there's, as I said, there's a couple reasons why. Number one, when you buy an out of the money put option, the stock has to fall pretty far. So that means the odds are really low that that outcome is going to occur. And there's something called the delta, which tells you, which also gives you a probability of you being profitable on that trade. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you a couple uh, option screens here with the delta. Another reason, number two, the second reason right, right here is because people are playing against the trend. If a stock is moving up and you're buying put options, there's going to be a really low chance that you're going to make money on that trade. Why buy something that is, is going against the trend? You want a stock that's moving lower if you're going to buy put options. You know, physics works in the, in the stock market as well. I'll tell you what that means. If you, if you ever heard the expression, an object in motion continues to stay in that motion until something comes along and pushes it in another direction. Same thing with the stock market. Stocks that are in a trend are going to stay in that trend until something comes along and knocks it in the other direction. So it, the only way for you to make money by buying put options is if the stock falls. So if a stock is trending higher and it's going to continue trending higher, why try to buy put options on that stock? It's just going to make the, the, the trade harder for you to make a profit if the stock keeps going up. The value of that put option is going to go down and you're just going to lose money. The third reason why most people fail with buying put options is because they don't give themselves enough time to be correct. Okay, so if the stock's going up and you think the stock's going to drop hard in one week, it's probably not going to happen. But if you give yourself three months, maybe six months, 
you know, maybe as the stock's going up, something will come along and knock it down in those three to six months. So you have to give yourself more time. Most people think that they know where the stock's going in a very short period of time. And most of those, um, those contracts fail. Those put option contracts expire without any value. So these three things right here are very important. And the reasons why most people fail when they buy out of the money short-term put options. And I want to show you an interesting study um, that the Chicago Mercantile Exchange did, the CME, between 1997 to 1999. They, they, they did a study on how many put options actually expired worthless. Meaning if you bought the put option, you're going to lose your whole investment. So between the three years, 97 to 99, we concentrate right here, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Those are the two stock markets uh, that, that we typically play and that we're talking about here. So if you look in this column right here, number percentage of expired put options. Okay, we're not talking about call options. We're talking about put options. And the S&P 500, these out-of-the-money put options expired 93.9% .9 of the time. And the NASDAQ put options expired over 95% of the time. So if you're a put option buyer, you have the odds are really stacked against you. Look at these numbers right here. Okay, if, why would you want to buy, uh, you know, an investment that, that can expire without any value 95% of the time. It's just not worth it. So what happened between 1997 and 1999? Well, let's go look at a chart of the uh, S&P 500. This is a chart of the SPY, which mimics the, the S&P 500. And we'll go back to, let's go back to those years of 1997 to 1999. Let's see if the weekly chart can help. No, okay, let's go back to the monthly chart. So the monthly chart um, right here, so we'll zoom in a little bit. So 1997 to 1999 is this period right here. Okay, these couple years right here. Where did the market go? It went up, just straight up between 97 and 99. You have this little blip right here in 1998, but overall the market was going up. So if you're trying to buy put options and, and make money on those put options in those three years, most likely you were going to fail because the market was going up. And when the market goes up, put option values go down. So it wasn't worth trying to make money by buying put options. The, the probability of you making money is very, very low. And, and look at the timeline of the S&P 500. The market's just been going up, up, up. Now we over here since 2008, look at it. Look at the market. We had the blip for COVID here and we've had um, this down move right here. But in the long run, over the long run, history buying put options is going to fail because the market consistently goes up over time all right so let's go back to uh our cheat sheet here so number one playing against the trend if you're if you're hoping that the stock market's going to go down you're playing against the trend all right you really have to make sure that you're buying put options as something's going down now what would that mean well let's go back to the charts here let's talk let's look at let's look at another chart um, let's look at something like Pepsi, Pepsi, okay, PepsiCo. Look at this nice long-term chart of Pepsi. This one's going up, 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 up. So if you're thinking that you want to try to make money on Pepsi in the long run uh, by buying put options, you're going to you're gonna fail because the stock keeps going up. Yes, we have these dips. And if you don't sell that put option on the dip here and take your profits and run, you're just going to eventually hold on to that put option contract that's going to expire worthless. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we look at a stock like Disney. Okay. Look at Disney just going down, 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 down. So this is what, this is what we're talking about using the trend, the current trend of the stock or the market, the, you know, the S and P 500, whatever, look at the way the stock is moving. Now, Disney would have been a better choice if you were, could have, if you were to buy put options and, and have a chance, an opportunity to actually make money because the stock's going down. Pepsi is going up, so you don't want to choose Pepsi. Now, if we look at the NASDAQ, same thing. The NASDAQ is over time. I'm sorry. Let me just go to the monthly chart here. Same thing. Market just goes up, 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 up. Why would you want to buy something that's going against the trend? Okay, so that's the, you know, one of the main reasons. And... You know, I also want to bring up the probability calculator here to show you 
y and where is my probability calculator give me a second here here we are probability calculator now i want to show you that you know um we're, we're talking about uh options put options that have a very low chance of being profitable so here's the stock at 100 and if we think that the stocks are going to go down to let's just say 70 and we put in 70 for our values our levels and days ahead let's just put 100 days ahead and the typical stock volatility is 25 percent so probability calculator will help you understand what are the chances of a stock moving from point A to point B in time in the time allotted. So the stock's at 100 and you want to know what the chances of it going down to 70 in the next 100 days, you can use something called the probability calculator. Now when you click on go, you're going to see here the probability of finishing below 70 is 0.32%. That's like no percent at all. On the other side, it's going to finish above 70, 99.68% of the time. Meaning that you have no chance as a put option buyer for the stock to go from 100 down to 70 in the next 100 days. Now, who's the, the, the ones that are winning on these trades? Well, it's, it's the put option sellers that are having almost 100% chance of winning on this trade. Okay. Now, for those of you that know us at smartoptionseller.com, we are big proponents of option selling, specifically put option selling, all right? So before we move on, I just wanna make sure that everyone gets a copy of our free Put Selling Basics ebook. This is an ebook all about what selling put options is, why it's a great strategy, and why we focus on that exclusively here at the smartoptionseller.com. So go to our website, smartoptionseller.com go to the put selling basics link right here and you can scroll down read some of the testimonials and then put your name and email address in this box here and we'll send you an email with a link for the free ebook so we're going back to our cheat sheet here once again the reasons why the odds are so low because people are picking the wrong strikes if we look at our um let's let's go to our option chain here Okay, we're going to look at an option chain for the S&P 500, which is the SPY right here. Finished at 408.76 on Friday, uh, or Thursday, I should say, at a short week. Now, here's an option chain, puts over here, calls on the left. Now, we're looking at um, options 69 days out, the June 16th expiration. Now, a lot of people think that they can guess where the stock's going to go in a very short period of time, and they will fail miserably. Okay, now... People like to spend a little bit of money. They don't want to spend a lot of money. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll concentrate on buying really cheap, out-of-the-money, shorter-term options, as I said. So let's look at you know the strike price of $250. The, the SPY is at 408 Someone thinks, okay, uh, I think the SPY is going to fall all the way down to 250 in the next 69 days. And it would cost them $0.19 cents per contract right here. You can buy at the ask which is actually 19 actual dollars. So for one contract, you, you can pay $19 in the hopes that the SPY is going to fall from 408 all the way down to 250. And these things are trading. People are buying these things. Okay, they think the SPY is going to fall from 408 to 250. Now let's go back to the SPY chart and see what that looks like. So right here, um, 409. Uh, on the on the option chain it says 408 doesn't really matter same thing now you're thinking it's going to fall down to 250 well where's 250 i gotta i gotta even move my chart here 250 is all the way down here in the next 69 days you think the spy is going to fall all the way down here now the chances of that happening are extremely low if we go back to the option chain one thing you can do is look at the delta if you have delta on your uh, platform, wherever you know, whoever you use for your broker platform, the delta of those 250 put options is less than one, one percent. You have less than one percent chance of the SPY falling that far. We can even go back to the, let's go back to the, <clears throat> the calculator, and figure out see what happens. So if the SPY is at, we can change the numbers here, 409, and in the next 69 days. And it'll show you that's the expiration date, June 16th. And the 
volatility is around 17%, and we want to know if it goes down to 250. We put 250 in both boxes here. <clears throat> Hit go. The, the calculator is giving us a 0% chance of the SPY falling that far, and, and conversely, a 100% chance that it won't fall that far. Here's the option buyers, the put option buyers chance of winning. Here's the put option sellers chance of winning. 100% chance of winning. Now, obviously this is not a guarantee because another COVID could come along or you know some disaster could come along and knock the market down. But in normal times, over the long run, normal conditions, this is what's going to happen. 100% of the time, the put option buyer is going to lose. The put option seller, like we are, are going to win at a very high rate okay so these are the reasons why i'm showing you that if you've been if you've been losing on a consistent basis by buying shorter term out of the money put options you're going you have the odds stacked against you you're going to lose more often than not all right so if we go back to our cheat sheet here let me move myself over once again again the reasons why you're choosing the wrong strike you're playing against the trend and you're not giving yourself enough time. So how do you remedy that? How can you become a better put option buyer if you continue to want to buy put options? Well, number one, give yourself some more time. Don't think that you know where the stock's gonna be in the time allotted. Give yourself some extra buffer. Give yourself an extra two months or three months, whatever. Yes, the option will cost more, okay? The more time that you give, the more expensive the option will be. But do you want to have a better opportunity to make a profit? Then you have to pay up a little bit more. You, you get what you pay for, okay? So if you're going to buy these short-term out of the money that are cheap, it's not going to work that well for you. So give yourself some more time. Will that work? It'll give you, it'll, it'll help you. I'm not saying that it, that it will be profitable, but at least you're giving yourself some more time to be right. Also, make sure you know which way the stock is trending or the market is trending. Don't buy put options if the stock's going up. You're just going to be fighting against the trend. It's like trying to swim upstream. It's too hard to do. Number one, choose a different strike price. Choose a more at-the-money strike price if you want, something that's closer to the current price of the stock. Yes, it will also cost more, but you're giving yourself a better opportunity because once the stock starts to drop, this at-the-money put option strike will move faster than those out-of-the-money put options. And the third is what we like to do. You can sell put options instead. You can become the put option seller and have that higher win rate. That's what we do at the smart option seller. We choose quality stocks, hopefully that are you know on the upswing. So we get the trend for us. And then we sell those out of the money put options and collect the cash. That's how we make our money. So those are the reasons why buying out of the money put options, shorter term out of the money put options has a, such a low probability of winning. So if you go back to that, um, if you go back to the, the chart here, just remember up to 95% of the time, these out of the money put options will expire worthless as the market's going up in the long run. You don't want to be a part of that. Okay. So there you go. The reasons why buying out of the money put options is a really hard thing to do and hard to win on a long term consistent basis. All right. I hope this, this video has been helpful for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put another video up on the screen here, uh, more about put option selling. So if you want to get more information on why we love selling put options, you can watch the next video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the video. It helps me to get YouTube to show these videos to more people. All right. That's all for me. And lastly, we can go back to our website. If you want to learn a little bit more about what we do, our services tab right here. We have two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to, to try to help you become a better trader if you need that help. All right, that's all for me today. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. Hope to see you back here next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.